Hey Smokers, Draga1 here, and today I find out that uh, I have a really bad habit of picking computers with reflective screens. Today we're going to be turning this netbook, a Dell Inspiron Mini 10, into a Linux SSD web browsing machine, or something like that. The SSD in question we're going to use is this SATA ADATA 120GB. SSD, that's uh, probably the lowest cost SSD I've run into on Amazon. Now the specs for this machine are a 1.6 GHz Intel Atom processor and 1 GB of RAM. Yeah, that's not a lot of RAM. But I actually looked up a few videos online of how to actually replace the RAM since... There's no frickin' RAM door. And you have to remove the entire motherboard to do it. That's right, the entire motherboard. No little flappy door, nothing. You have to take the whole thing out. Now, luckily, the actual hard disk is a totally different story. In fact, it's actually easy to replace the hard disk on this. Or, in this case, the SSD. So, shit. But first, before we totally violate this with our SSD-ness, let's see what it looks like right now. Oh, cool. Yep, it's got a pretty bland installation of Windows XP on it that we all know and love. Luckily for us, we will actually be retaining this installation of Windows XP since we're just taking the drive out of there. But, of course, as you know, Windows XP is no longer supported by Microsoft and is no longer getting updates. Uh, of course, still, some people still decide to trudge through and uh, make do with what they have and stay strong with their perfect operating system that has been perfected for the past decade. But we're not going to do any of that. Instead, we're going to go to an operating system whose kernel has been around even longer. Linux. But then I guess you could argue that the Windows NT kernel is also old, and then you could go back to other kernels, and, you know, it, it doesn't matter. But we will be installing this via USB because this does not have an optical drive. So let's go ahead and shut this down and try it. And oh yes, we're going to be uh, booting Linux all right, and we're going to be booting it off of USB. First, we're going to try booting it off of a floppy. Oh wow, Dan, check this out. It's the BIOS setup for a netbook. Interestingly, it doesn't look any different than any other one. Currently, our hard disk size is a 120 gigabyte mechanical hard disk. So it's not like we're going to be t taking too big of a downgrade in the storage department. What will our actual speed gains be? I have no idea because I have no idea what version of SATA is on this. I know it's SATA, but it's probably going to be SATA 1. Again, and yes, I actually mean SATA 1, because I've now learned that it's SATA 1, 2, and 3, not SATA 3, 6, whatever. Okay, so uh, we got that, we got uh, Giga System Memory, and we want to see the boot. Uh, would probably be under removable storage. Aha, look at that! <laughs> so we will move this. Uh, hold on. <laughs> we are having a slight difficulty. F6 and F5, move it up and down, okay. F6, ha, floppy first, USB storage, second, and then everything else after it. Exit, saving changes. It's now trying to boot off the floppy. <laughs> and we, there's our Linux, we're done. We got it, Linux booted off of USB. But not the Linux you were probably thinking of. So, um, you're probably thinking, what the hell are you doing? Well, remember in last week's video, I did Linux Mandrake? Yeah. That's the boot disk I made because I thought I would use it. And apparently it's trying to do something. It's trying to find its version of Linux off the hard disk or any other drive it can find. And if it's able to find anything, I'm going to be a little bit scared. What's probably going to happen here is it's going to write more periods to the screen as it continues to wonder where the hell Linux is. It's not actually going to boot anything. I just sort of did that as a joke. Um, don't ever unplug your floppy drive while it's trying to do that. Or things will become considerably sad. 
Or it might actually still keep putting periods there, I don't know. So, now that we know that floppy disks, you can boot from a floppy disk off of this, uh, let's install Windows 98, I guess. Uh oh, it got an error. Alright, here's the Windows 98 startup menu. Oh, Jesus! Oh, I remember this error. Dang it. Dag nabbit, I'm getting sidetracked. Okay, for realsy now. Let's put the real Linux drive in. There's that beeping sound again. Try Linux without installing. So we're going to be using Luubuntu, Lubuntu, or whatever else you want to call it. Now, wait a minute. Aren't we forgetting something? Oh yeah, the SSD. We haven't even put that in yet. We kind of need it. But let's see if this can actually start up first, like make sure there's not a problem with the drive so that, you know, I don't have to go through the whole trouble of installing the SSD into the computer for it to just mess up and not work when I'm done. <laughs> hey, not too bad. That wasn't too bad of a startup time either. Uh, so there we have it, uh, live, live CD Linux on the Dell Inspiron Mini 10. And there it is. And this is version 16. So when it comes time for us to actually install, we will hit that right there and install it. Curse you, glossy screen! So since that was easy as balls, let's go ahead and just shut this down. Shut down. It'll power off. And we'll unplug it. Now, on to step one. Holy crap, even the top of this is shiny. Okay, so let's turn it over. Of course, the most important step is to remove the battery so that you don't kill yourself or the computer. Interestingly, this is the hardest part that I'm actually having to accomplish. Seriously? It's this hard? This is not even the hardest part. Look at this! Look at this! There we go, finally. Well, there it goes. That's the battery. It's out. So, uh, this is a pretty simple uh, tear apart here. So if those five minutes of watching tear apart videos of this computer are going to be sufficient for me to complete the operation, uh, this should be the only tool I need, except for a screwdriver, I think. And I believe what he did right here was... Oh, Jesus, this is scary. Oh, God! I'm gonna break it! Hey. <gasps> did I break it? I don't know! After playing with this for about five minutes, I discover this. There. Something's not quite right here. Oh yes, there's the little subject of screws on the back, and uh, I didn't remove them. If you steal my Windows XP product key, I will kill you. All right, we got this, we got this, we got this, we got this. Well, that one's not coming out either, huh? Gonna be difficult, eh? We can be difficult. I'll show. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Magnets. Alright. So now the first thing I was trying to do will now work. Let's try it again. Oh, look how loose that is already. Or maybe that's because I broke it. I don't know. Oh, holy crap. This is just coming right off. So I think if I read it properly, you're supposed to shove it, pull it, pull it or push it one way or the other. Something has probably been damaged at this point, but uh, let's just try to pull through. Ah, there it goes! Oh, sweet Jesus, I fucked it up horribly! Uh, don't, don't look at the dents. Uh, I'm pretty sure the keyboard will still function. Oh, God, I hope I don't have to buy another one of those. Okay, uh, moving right along. <laughs> Jerry, can you get that cringe meter up on the screen? <laughs> Thanks, buddy. So luckily... The hard disk is right here. That's the hard disk screw. And all you literally have to do is pull that down, and it's out. So what do we have here? It's crap. The fuck? The fuck? How in the hell did this happen? Seriously? <laughs> what? Okay. Okay, after about 45 minutes, I get this out. 
and we're supposed to put it back in like so. So I'll leave it there so I don't forget because I probably will. Let's open the box. I don't think I opened it because I literally just cut, I cut the cardboard in half and missed the target. Okay. Moving along as fast as we can be. Oh, that's a cute one. Look at that. Uh, slightly lower build quality than the SanDisk ones. I feel like I'm about to pull this thing apart. Uh, okay, primo. Just like that. Ta-da! Now let's put all the screws back in. Screw it in, screw it in. More screwing. Lots of screwing. Alright, so there's our... SSD for practical use only. Let's uh, cure it in place. Plop the keyboard back over and pray heavily that it's not irreparably damaged. Screw the keyboard back to the rest of the computer. And I'm sorry if I thought the keyboards in this thing were exactly or close to exactly like those found in PowerBooks and iBooks. Uh, I could have sworn when I was watching those videos that they didn't end up doing this first, but there may have been some marijuana involved. All right. Ooh, ow. Don't do... Oh, good thing it has an SSD. All right, okay. So let's plug this in and see what our BIOS detects. The hell? I think I pressed the wrong button. Oh, I pressed F2 for the boot menu, not the... BIOS menu, well, at least it still turns on, and they have two keyworks, which was one of, which was next to one of those posts that was bent to crap from my manhandling. Operating system not found. Well, no shit. It didn't even give me a chance to press something! Damn it! It goes by so fast, I don't think I even have the reaction time to... Oh, here we go. Enter setup. All right, okay. HDD size 120 gigs. So something has changed and it can detect it. So now we're going to install Linux. Oops. We'll plug the drive in, tell it to exit without saving. Actually, I told it to save, but that's okay. The operating system not found, what? Clearly something has gone amiss. Quick draw, McGraw. Oh, yeah! Woo! Alright! Try it without installing, but you know it will happen anyway. Well, that looked pretty terrifying, but we will trudge along through. Oh, God! Okay, why does it keep doing that? Whew! Done near pooped! Okay, so even though the camera is not picking up the proper color of the display, let's go ahead and install it anyway. Oh, but before we do that, we probably want to take a look at our partition tables and stuff. That's one of the cool little system tools that comes with this. G Parted, which hopefully will also launch... Remember, we only have one gig of RAM, and this probably could get sad. Okay, so that's our USB flash drive. Let's take a look at... Oh god, the installer's coming up now. Ah! So this is DevSDC, and this is our SSD, as you can see. 111 gigs. So it obviously it detects it, but Linux will take care of formatting that, so we won't even worry about it. Let's bring back up the install. And this is the install, and everything is going to be much, much easier than Mandrake Linux because, you know, it's... It's modern Linux, and modern Linux, as a lot of people have told me, is a little bit more user-friendly, as well as, especially when it comes to the installation procedure. So, uh, we'll go ahead and do this. Install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. Yeah, that's pretty much something I always want to click. So, that's probably also going to need me to connect to the internet. Erase disk and install LUbuntu. Ubuntu. 
Uh, you can erase the disc and install your button. Ooh, you. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Uh, that's the only option it's giving us because there isn't any other option. No partitioning or anything like that. Uh, of course, you can do something else, but we don't want to. We don't want to encrypt the drive right now. Uh, use LVM with a new Ubuntu. Uh, will set up logical volume management, and I don't really know what that is, so uh, I don't care. So apparently, it thinks that it's a SCSI drive. So, okay. I've now said it's okay for it to begin its format. Let's go to Cupertino, because this has absolutely nothing to do with Apple at all. I can't spell it. Oh my god. There we go, that's a city. I English, US. Your name. Oh, it's a 1010. Oh, mini 10. I guess we could just keep the computer name drug as Inspiron 1010. This could take a little bit of brainstorming to figure out what I want the name to be. I like how Linux is probably better at detecting what computer this even is than Windows is, and, well, better than I am. I mean, come on. So let's just, I think, uh. Huh. Hakabakuku has this really good naming system he uses, but I don't really remember what it is, so... Let's just leave it Inspiron 1010, just for... brevity. <laughs> oh fuck, I'm still recording, goddammit! And I could encrypt my home folder if I want. Apparently a four-character password is weak. Whatever. I'll give you weak. So there it is. It's now begun the installation process a la Windows 7 and above, where it has a line at the bottom and it does a bunch of stuff and talks to you. Now the difference between this and pretty much every other OS install is that it actually gives you something to do while you're installing. Now that doesn't mean that it that there's a game you get to play or anything, but uh, you can actually uh, go through this little slideshow here. Of course, I'm having a little bit of difficulty at the moment because I'm moving the mouse on the trackpad and it's not actually moving on the screen, but uh, uh, that's just a, a small issue that we don't really need to worry too much about. Well, while that's doing that, let's take a look at this. This is the bracket that came with the SSD. Now, supposedly, I think it's to make it so that it's as thick as one of these, but I thought it was the exact same. Like, I didn't think you need to make it any bigger. I've never found a use for these, it's just, um, I'm fine. Oh look, we have an SSD quick start guide. Waving manuals at Linux has done some weird things in the past for me. Uh, okay, this is the quick start guide. Quick would not describe this too well, actually. Holy crap. I've seen disk defragmentation printouts from Windows 98 that are shorter. Holy crap. Well, I guess this is all different languages. So, ultimately, you're just looking at this, which says something that I can't read because I have the camera focused to the screen. I'll read it to you. Hey, Data Sol say Drive is the next generation data storage drive that will overcome the limits of a conventional hard disk drive pictured here. It is suitable for industrial use or direct replacement for normal home desktop slash notebook. This installation guide provides a general installation and handling instructions. It is strongly recommended to be used in conjunction with the owner's manual of your computer. And wouldn't you believe it? I actually have that! Actually, that's a huge lie, but I still have this that came with it, though. And I swear, I have two of these things now. I mean, look at all this stuff on it, and nobody even cares. Like, I never even opened this, so I was like, ugh. Oh, man, I'm like 12 years old, I just don't have time for this. Can I move the mouse yet? Still appears to be stuck on creating ext4 file system for the SCSI disk, which isn't actually a SCSI disk. Great. Okay, all right, it crashed, okay? It doesn't do anything, so let's power it off. Let's try this again. Oh, God. See, this this doesn't look good. 
this this doesn't look good. But instead of using trying trying it without installing, let's just go straight to the installer. Maybe that'll actually work without crashing. Oh boy. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh my god. And look, it just goes straight to the installer without loading up anything else that may actually get on our way of actually completing this. So let's start over. Okay, I'm gonna not install third-party software just to speed everything up because Jesus, it's taken forever. Oh, wait a minute, I kind of needed that stuff. What if I'm not able to download it again? We'll do it. Nope, nope. We'll do it. You son of a bitch. There. God, is it already lagging out again? Oh, come on, we didn't even do anything yet. Okay, guess what? We got back to the same place we were before. Okay. Do it again. This time better. Hopefully. Yes, I do want to erase the drive. Oh shit, it was still the Windows XP disk! Oh, you thought? Alright, let's just stay in New York so it doesn't yell at us. Because I probably spelled Cupertino wrong. It's just don't want anything more to happen that's bad, and just go... Okay. So here's the part of the install that I got stuck on before, and the cursor was in the same place! Okay, alright, okay. <laughs> we're alright, we're alright. Just creating an entire file system, okay. Can I click this? So here's that slideshow thing I was talking to you about. Lubuntu is based on the LXDE desktop environment, a fast-performing and energy-saving desktop environment. LXD has been proven to work well with both old and new computers, ensuring you a smooth desktop experience. Browse on the web. Create an edit document. So basically, this is exactly, well, actually a little bit more informative than uh, uh, Windows 7 or Windows Vista or whatever crap you can come up with. And it lets you go through and read it at your own pace. Something that Definitely was not the case with Windows anything. It's like, oh, I'm in the middle of reading this. Oh, it's gone. I think that was particularly bad in, what was it, Windows 95, where it gave you these text walls bigger than this, and then I had to read them. It did take a while, but whatever. Chat with your friends with Pigeon and Empathy. Man, I haven't used Pigeon in years. God damn. Download software with ease. Need help? One of the biggest advantages with... Lubuntu is the wonderful community that comes with it. The same community which is probably cringing right now at this video. Man, you can even scroll. It supports two-finger scroll. Two-finger scroll. Oh my god, it probably does that better than Windows XP was that I had installed on here. But yeah, you get the basic stuff. You get ABI Word, Gnumeric, and LibreOffice. LibreOffice is pretty awesome. And it even supports Flash, which is... You know, I don't even use Flash anymore, but that's okay. So it's still stuck on creating ext4 file system, just like it was before. And uh, if we remember before, we had a similar problem with this. Uh, we were waiting a long time for it to format the drive, and I had to do it several times. But at least this time it's not frozen, but ugh. I guess we'll wait. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ah, oh, shit! Okay, let's uh, try Lubuntu without installing again and go into Gparted to see what the hell happened. Well, we're back. Alright, let's go down here, go to System Tools, and something that pretty much I primarily use Lubuntu for. L-Ubuntu. I would just want to call it L-Ubuntu. It's so much easier. Okay. So it looks like it started to manhandle my drive a little bit. We have an NTFS partition. That wasn't there before. What the fuck? Well, what we can do is we can just totally destroy all of this. Since it is getting stuck at the same spot. I suppose it could be a bad SSD. Um, extended. Oh, they're locked. Why? Ah yes, busy. At least one of the logical partitions is mounted. Why is it mounted? I don't know. Ah, crap. So it can't even mount the volume yet. 
it can't unmount it to do partition work. So what is happening? So it's mounted, yet unmounted. What? This command should unmount the drive. D Not mounted. What? It just said it was mounted! The hell is wrong with this thing? Oh my god. Well, I didn't mount it, that's for sure. Failed to read last sector, invalid argument, either the volume is arrayed, wasn't set up yet, I think it's just because Linux got screwed up because it crashed while I was creating the file system, which apparently I couldn't wait for it. So now I have to delete stuff, and it's not working because it says that it's active. It doesn't say that it's mounted, it just says that it's active busy. At least one logical partition is mounted. I don't understand! It says it's not mounted. I don't know what you want me to do. This is what happens when I try to format the non-locked partition. It's been at this for quite a while. So here's that same screen, locked up. Not doing anything. So apparently there is some problem formatting this drive. Maybe it crashed for some other reason, and then when it tried to actually format it, it created a problem. And now we're not actually able to do anything without Linux crashing while doing it. So, this may be a task for Hiren's boot CD. Uh, or I may have to actually rip out the drive again and uh, wipe it. Let's try the former first. Alright, so let's shut this down and put the other flash drive in that now has Hiren's boot CD on it. Damn it! What the fuck? Finally, okay. USB storage? The hell? That's not USB storage. What the fuck? Oh shit! Quick boot mode disabled. Virtual machine monitor? Bluetooth? Well, look at all this frickin' cool stuff. Let's see if I can actually read it now. It still was just as fast. At least it's doing something different now. And that's all it's gonna do! Did I not make the USB flash drive right? Come on, what's happening here? Okay, well that works. Yep, I definitely did something wrong because... Take a look at that. Look familiar? Yeah. This drive is not bootable. Let's try and make it again. Are you kidding? What the hell? Oh, I see. You want to play that game, don't you? Well, I'll show you that game. <laughs> so, yes, this is happening. I think we can make it work with a little bit of USB magic. I turned it off again, damn it. Where's the BIOS? What kind of reaction time do you have to have to do that? Oh my god. DVD CDRW. Okay, that's set. <laughs> oh god. I think I fixed it. Did I? That didn't seem to have an effect. It doesn't even detect a USB device. In fact, it doesn't detect anything. It probably would detect more if I unplugged this. No, it just does nothing. What the hell is going on? Alright, let's try this again. You fucking serious? Bro, are you serious? Like, let's see if I can just do this. I don't believe it. Wow! Is this drive just foobar? Let's get another one. Alright. G parted. Oops. 
Uh, as you can see, El Ubuntu still boots up right off the drive. So let's uh, restart this and. Uh... Holy shit! It's defective! Okay! <laughs> Failed to find CPU device node? Well, this doesn't look good. Oh god, what is this? I didn't ask for this. Don't touch the key map! Oh, where are you going? Hey, wait! Oh god. Start the live CD already! Oh, well, there it is. Okay. Okay. And there's G parted. Our knight in shining armor here. So let's see what happened. Okay, so this is a little bit more lucid than what we were seeing on Lubuntu. It's actually showing that there's some sort of problem with this. But it's not showing that these lower partitions here are locked, which means that something that L Ubuntu was doing was messing with them. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can just format it to ext4. Of course, we'll have to repartition it into like th a frickin' pizza of other partitions, just because Linux is weird. So here's the device information. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and delete all the partitions. Not busy, there are no mounted logical partitions. Cool. Not active. Also good. Perhaps they have to get deleted in order. There we go. There's now just one contiguous region, I guess. And so now we want to make a new one, ext4, just so that it can be happy and hunky-dory. And let's apply the change. There's probably nothing wrong with the drive, and this is going to format without a hitch. So this almost seems like a software problem on behalf of... Lubuntu. Weird. Hopefully this doesn't crash. It's still going! At least it's not frozen! Oh no! This froze too?! Oh no, this is a totally different Linux installation! It's a totally different live CD! And it can't format the drive! And if it can't format the drive, then that means it can't install the operating system! <laughs> you did this. You did this, you damn dirty hummingbird! Well, the only thing I can do now is to pull the drive out of the computer again and try and format it with something else, cause oh my god! But then what if I format it, it goes to format it again and it doesn't work! I'll have to block scan this thing. So, um, I don't even know what just happened because I forgot I wasn't recording. But now that you can see that the computer is upside down now, you can probably guess what the next step's gonna be. Basically, it froze. Um, I don't know if that would, if I managed to capture that on film, but it did. And I did not screw it. And uh, basically I was talking about how I'm not very competent at uh, taking apart computers, yada, 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 and that I need to do it again because now, um, there is no other way to format the drive. Now, if we do manage to get the drive formatted via some other means, I mean, that'd be great, right? But I don't exactly know how to format it. It's gonna have to be repartitioned anyway. So if I can get it hooked up to another computer, a Linux computer, format it with ext4, hopefully it can repartition itself once it gets over because, ah, geez, I, I just don't know now. I, this, may, this, this may be a bad SSD. I'm gonna have to block scan this to see if it's okay to make sure it's working because I am having my doubts. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug this into my main computer, run a block scan on it to see if it uh, is failing, check the smart status and see what we're up against, and then I'll uh, try to plug it into another computer so it can uh, format. Well, everything looks okay. Did okay on the block scan there. Um, no problems with the smart here. Uh, man, every time I use this, it makes me feel like I'm defusing a bomb. Okay, but I've pretty much found out that this volume right here is the SSD. God, I have to be so careful with this. I don't want another Mac Pro incident. Okay, my only option is delete volume. Oh God!
Convert to GPT disk. Okay. Do not assign a drive letter or drive path. Format the drive with NTFS. Okay. Okay. But it's not going to show up on the computer. We don't even want to use it with this computer. Um, so let's throw it back in the computer and see what happens. Okay, so since I really don't want to do this too many times, I think I'm just going to plug it in there without any bracket, any holding bracket, and I don't think I'm even going to screw the keyboard back in. I'm just going to let it sit in there. Good, I guess. Okay, so I think this one is G-parted. More like departed. But let's try it. Okay, the keyboard is working. Luckily. Okay, same error there, but that could just be with the installer thing itself, because it doesn't like something it found on the system. Alright, we're back again, and this is the dedicated G parted. Let's take a look at this. So it looks like it put a Microsoft Reserve partition in there. So we need to delete these. Will it be able to do this successfully? I don't know. We'll find out. But I think reformatting ext4 won't be a problem anymore because so let's just try and apply that let's just get rid of the partition and it's done quick painless all right so i think what happened was is that the installer crashed in the middle of writing the partition table and everything went to shit and it was a master boot record partition table now it's gpt i think let's find out there we go partition table gpt right there so, let's, now that it's on a more Linux-friendly mode, let's go ahead and create a new partition. And we're going to make it ext4. Now this is already going to be, uh, this is going to get formatted over again. But I want to make sure it can do this first before we go crazy. Or there's just something magical about ext4 that causes Linux to crash. I mean, that would be ass. It froze again! What the fuck? Okay, we're back here again. Alright, so here's that partition we were looking at earlier. So we can see this GPT, what's this problem it's having? Unable to detect file system. Possible reasons are the file system is damaged. Well, yeah, and it is. So, here's the ultimate test. We're now on parted magic, which is basically just G parted on a different distribution of Windows system. Who knows? Anyway, I've used it a lot with for with much success and uh Let's see if it'll crash this time. It'll crash a totally different computer, running a totally, uh, yet another live CD that's totally different. Okay, so let's do that. Let's create a new partition. Let's make it ext4 instead of ext2. And apply. Hold on, let me make sure I don't have any other drives in this computer. Nope. Not at all. Okay. Let's see if that messes up. Holy crap, it's done! So maybe it's something wrong with the netbook that's disallowing me from properly formatting this. So if that works, and I've thought of a pretty good idea of what to do next, is to begin the Lu Ubuntu installation on this computer, and then interrupt it partway through so it can finish on that one. Really what I need to do is just have it partition the the drive correctly. Now I could do this myself and I may end up doing that if this doesn't work but I'm gonna have to do it. Give it a shot. What? Did you hear that? First it went beep and then what? What the hell's wrong with this thing? It went beep and then it went beep at a lower pitch. What? Okay, uh, so we can do install the Ubuntu uh, 
don't really need to boot up the thing. Uh, in fact, if we don't want to damage anything software-wise, we could just let it fully install LUbuntu on here, and then put it back on the other one and try to reinstall it over itself so that it works on the netbook instead of this computer. Because the point is not to install Linux on this. I mean, that's not a big deal. Installing it on the netbook, that's a little bit more of a deal, and it looks kind of depressing right now. How come every time I have to do something Linux related, it does some shit like this? Okay, so to reiterate what we're doing here, right here, what it's going to offer us to do, erase and install LUbuntu. Oh my god, just find an easier word to say for this. Linux, I'll just say Linux. And so what that's going to do is that's going to set up the boot partition, the swap partition, and the home partition all automatically. I think that's all of them. I, I don't know. But this automatically allocates all that for me. So I need it to do that, and then we need to stop it when it's done so that to see if it'll just allow a straight install. Oh yeah, I gotta do this shit. I don't really need it. Oh, now it thinks it's a totally different computer. That's great. Well, I think we're gonna erase over all this, and we'll be fine. It's already copying files. Where are you installing it? On the flash drive? Wait a minute, is it installing it straight onto an EXT4 partition? Almost finished copying files? You mean I didn't set up a swap partition and it's just okay with that? What? Well, if I'd known that, I would've just thrown it back in the lamp book. Not that that's really the optimal way to use Linux. I think that's probably pretty horrifying to a lot of people as to what's happening right now. Or maybe it's just copying files places? I don't know. Well, it's not frozen. I don't think there's anything wrong with this SSD. I don't really want to interrupt this because I don't know if it's done the whole process yet. Fuck. Now it's installing the system. Oh my god, it's already done. I could have been done with this video like three hours ago. <laughs> okay, so actually, we want it still to boot off of the USB flash drive, which has Linux on it. The Linux installer on it. So, we want to try without installing. And uh, we want to take a look at uh, Gparted again. Why don't I plug this into the... This I, I have a USB 3 drive. That, that could have even been even faster. I have a USB 3 flash drive that, I just, that I'm running Linux off of right now. And I have a USB 3 card in here, yet I plugged it into the USB 2 port. And it still was fast as crap! All right, so here we go. So this is how it's supposed to look. We have uh, 106 gigs of our primary, I guess. This is the sw this is the swap. This is I don't know, but what the point is is that um, Ubuntu likes it. Ubuntu, L -U Linux likes it. You know, I'm 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 sorry. There's too many damn names and they're too damn hard to pronounce. And, I mean, how many times during your average day do you say, Lu Ubuntu, Ubuntu, I guess the guy's at Conical, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they just call it U, or L, or X. Yeah, I probably should have gotten me some X. Yeah, that would have helped. Yeah, yeah. Is X even a drug? E, I meant E, yes! Okay, so since that looks good, if we try to install it again... Well, let's just try to install it again right now to see what it'll do when we get it over to the netbook. Now the partitions have been created. We already have Linux on there. That's sure, whatever, okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Can I not continue? Oh, it's it's going. It's just, okay. All right, so now things have changed. Take a look at this. Erase Ubuntu, because oh, it thinks it's Ubuntu, and reinstall. This will delete your... Okay. Erase disk is different than Erase Ubuntu. So, this implies that it's actually going to format the drive. We don't want to format operation to start on the netbook, because that's what crashes it. So we would need to do this when we get it over there. So, uh, we leave this sort of half-assed installation that we started on the surrogate machine next to me. Okay. So, and then we we install over it once it gets over to the netbook. Okay, you follow me so far. Let's go ahead and move it. 
You know what this reminds me of? There's so many messy cables. This reminds me of that scene from the Inspector Gadget movie where you see inside his chest and there's all that crap in there. It looks like that. Okay, so... Here's our drive. Here's where it's going. In sort of a more temporary fashion. Carefully put the keyboard back down since it's already been damaged somewhat. Swap this out for this, although they all look exactly the same. I'm losing track of what's what. Okay, plug in the power. And, uh, let's go. Okay, let's try to install. It does this all the time. It just looks gross. It looks ugly. It makes me think that uh, I have a problem with a graphics card or something. I don't know. Just make it look prettier, guys. It's such a nice looking wallpaper, man. It's so good. So good. Moment of truth here coming up. Oh my god, why is it taking so long? Okay, here's the screen we were waiting for. We want to erase Ubuntu and reinstall. Delete all your Ubuntu settings and shit. We don't want to erase the disk. We don't want to put two on there at the same time. No, we just want to do this. Install now. Wait, what? Why do you need to change the partition tables? You don't need to do that! Let's go back! Okay, so I'm gonna select something else here. Alright, see right here so where it says checkmark format? We do not want to format. Oh god, what are you doing? Okay, alright. So dev SDC is this drive. There's a swap partition. And I guess it's safe to just go ahead and click install now. File system has not been marked for formatting. Directories containing system files that already exist under any defined mount point will be deleted during the install. Please ensure you have backed up any data. Okay, I'm fine with that. Hopefully it works. If you continue, the changes list below will be written to the disks. The following partitions are going to be formatted. No! What, what part of don't format stuff don't you understand? Is it impossible? Are you format happy, Linux? Like, what if I was trying to do something where I didn't want to format things? I guess I have no choice in the matter. The swap partition is un uncheckmarkable. So we have to install now. And just let it format the swap. For five, it's formatted as swap. It's just something it has to do. It needs to format the swap. So we gotta let, us, let it do it. Godspeed swap partition! <laughs> oh, okay, alright! Wait a minute, if that's the point in time where it formats, how come it doesn't get locked up there? Finally. Oh god. Guess I'll just let this sit here for a while. The screen went off, and it hasn't moved at all. Can I skip this? It's not going anywhere because it doesn't have internet. It didn't need internet before, but let's give it internet now. Jesus. Does that mean it's gonna go now? It's doing some stuff. I guess more waiting. Oh, come on, what are you doing? What is this? It just keeps doing this over and over and over again, and it's doing a lot more since I plugged it into internet. But what's it matter now? It just keeps going in circles and circles. What is it? What is it? What is that? Pigeon. So wait, does it just need to do this? Do I really just need to let it sit here? I mean, I'm okay with waiting like four hours for this to get done, but if it's not actually gonna get done, I'm gonna get really upset. That looks familiar. This just in, it's come to my attention that this is broken! <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm just going to install Linux onto this. Let it finish the install, then transplant this to the netbook. Then we're gonna be done forever. And it's gonna be fast as hell this time because I didn't plug the computer in. And it's gonna be fast now because I got USB 3 now, baby. What? It just started up? It just started up? It worked? You mean it finished installing? It booted off the SSD, guys. Oh, God. You think I would have at least tried to restart the netbook first? Oh, my God. But I'm going to I'm gonna guess something really quick before I put this in here. It's not going to work. It's not going to boot up. It's not going to work. 
There's just something inherently wrong with this computer that makes it doomed to forever use Windows XP. Oh my god. No USB flash drive connected. <gasps> uh, oh, oh, oh! We got it! We got it! <laughs> uh, wrong keyboard! <gasps> Woo! Now I have no idea which install this is. Is this the install I did when I installed it on the surrogate computer? Or is this the install I did on this computer? Who cares? <laughs> Incomplete language support. I guess I can fix my language support. Now we're gonna run some updates, I guess. No language information available. Your system does not have enough information about the available languages yet. Do you want to perform a network update to get them now? Okay. So we're done. It was probably a lot easier than I thought it was, and the partition table is probably completely fucked for use with Linux. But it doesn't matter. We did it. We have the network booting. Uh, well, Ubuntu, Lubuntu. Uh, language support is not installed completely. Well, install it. Oh my god. Well, I apparently let it sit there too long while I was waiting for it to update stuff, and it's not actually doing anything, even though the power light's on, so let's go ahead and hold down the power button and let it uh, mess up its file system again. I'll have to fix it with the fsuck command, and we'll be right back where we started, and I'll finally be able to finish up this video. Oh yeah, the Linux reboot sequence, as you can see, it's not very interesting. It's just a black screen. Oh, but oh wait, it becomes blue fixes the file system errors I caused, and there we go, back where we were before. So if this is working, then we should be able to play, I don't know, Open Arena on it? Here's the sticky note from the chip video for all the games I pseudo abdicated. And which one of those games depressingly did not work out of all of them? Super Tux. Yep, there it goes. There it goes. Assuming it doesn't already have Super Tux installed. In fact, it's not even a games category. Because no, L-Ubuntu, Lubuntu is for work, and it's the Windows 2000 of Linux interfaces, LXDE. Oh, crap. Haha, <laughs> looks like we're done. Oh, what? What's this? It looks like we have our first casualty, but not really. As you can see right here, the host name of the computer. It's the host name of the surrogate computer. That means that the installation we tried on a netbook, which I'm just assuming is impossible now, didn't work. And I had to install it on another computer to make it work. I don't care. It works, or at least I hope it works. Let's see if SuperTux will run. So conveniently, L Linux <laughs> added a games category. How nice of them. Let's see if it works. Well, I can hear it, and I can see it. Holy shit, is that the mouse cursor movement speed? I better not be the character movement speed! Maybe it's just because this bar's at the bottom. It's not fully like... Oh god. Full screen on... Resolution... We must turn it down! We can't turn it down! 320 by 240 at 120 hertz? What?! I don't even want to do that, because that's going to, like, not be displayable by this monitor. How about 640 by 4 frickin' 80? What? What's up with these weird refresh rates? And weird resolution, 960 by 540 at 119 hertz. I mean, that's fine for, like, CRTs and stuff. Or if you have one of those badass gaming monitors. But not here. I just want 640 by 480, 60. Well, I think I got it, actually. 800 by 600. 800 by 656. Okay, we're not done yet. 
680, 640 by 480 at 120, 640 by 480 at 59. I think that's going to be as close as it's going to get. How do I confirm it? I hope the back button applies it. And it doesn't. Oh my god. I bet you have to restart the game. See if it applies the proper screen resolution or launches the game at all. Anyway, it's not launching the game. Chances are we'll have to restart the computer before the game will launch again. Go away. What the hell is going on? Why can't I get a terminal back? Fine, we'll just do this. Uh, control function alt F1. Oh, cool. Something's very wrong. Okay, remember what I said before? We're gonna have to restart it. I was right. Oh, that's great. The logout window will not come up. What is wrong with this netbook? Holding the power button. Yes, holding the power button. <laughs> My god. This thing is from hell. Maybe it's just pissed I bent up its keyboard. I bet you that's what it is. A little feedback would be nice. You know, like a loading screen. Well, there's the blue screen. I... And those are those error messages I saw from earlier. And it looks like the desktop background changed its scaling. So I guess that was kind of a fast reboot. Changed resolution mode. And it's running at a slightly higher frame rate. All right. Except it still looks like it's in slow motion. If this is how fast it runs on this computer, I can't imagine how badly it would have ran on the tr chip. No wonder it gave up and didn't try and do anything. You know, I really like this game, but if it's really going to run like this, like, what's the point? But then again, this is supposed to be a web browser laptop. What am I doing? I'm playing a game on it. It's not even supposed to do that. So let's see if we can successfully quit it, because I really don't care anymore. If you want Super Tux... Well, I remember this music. Anyway, um, if you want to play this game yourself, just go get Linux and install it or something. <laughs> the power button is so close to the escape button, it just makes me wonder what would be faster. Oh my god! This computer's taken up so much time, I've almost filled up my entire SD card. Like, I don't do that very often. But I only have four minutes of recording time left. I have to think of something to do. I just tried to start Firefox, and all these message boxes just popped up everywhere! It's fucking attacking me! I just want to open Firefox! Why do you need me to do all of these things? I'm sorry! I'm really sorry! What, what is all this? Uh, what? No! Leave me alone! No, I can't even click. I can't even click. Oh, my... What? Stay open, damn it! Wait, what? No! Okay, apparently I didn't delete clips from last week's episode, and now I got 30 minutes left. Okay. Now, I was going to use this as, like, a really simple web browsing machine that would just be able to, you know, browse the web and do stuff. But, uh, unfortunately, it's been a pretty painful experience just trying to use YouTube for the, I don't know, three seconds I've been using it. Just clicking around seems really clunky, and I... I don't... I mean, the video playback is smooth. Don't get me wrong. It looks fine. And I guess it's fine if you're just watching some YouTube. And it's perfect. I mean, it looks good. I, I like it. Um, but I don't know. I just feel that if I was trying to use this in any capacity other than just letting a YouTube video run, or maybe a Twitch stream... I I think I would start getting more frustrated with it than anything else. Trying to do intense, uh, multitasking, intense, lots of tabs. No way, it only has a gigabyte of RAM. And like I said before, that RAM is not coming out of there. No, 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 we're not upgrading. We're not upgrading with that. It's not, it's not worth it to go through the process of upgrading the RAM on this if this computer is just going to give me this much trouble anyway. So let me go ahead and put this thing back together the way it's supposed to be put together, and let me wrap this up. Oh yeah, and that's the max volume.
I can't hear it either. Okay, sorry. That's the max volume. That's not too bad. I wish it was louder. It does only have these two pinhole speakers on the bottom of the case. But anyway, let me put this back together how it's supposed to be put together. Put the hard disk in its proper chassis, screw down the keyboard, and then we'll uh, sort of close on that. Well, this has been fun. I successfully installed the SSD into the netbook, into the Dell Inspiron Mini 1010 or 1010 Mini, I can't remember. And, uh, it, uh, crashes. Yeah, probably after about a minute or two, sitting at the desktop. Don't really need to do anything to trigger it or anything, it just, just crashes. And hard crashes too, the whole Linux control delete thing doesn't really do anything either. So, uh, at least there is one last thing we do, and that is the startup test, is really there's not enough time to use the operating system to really do anything meaningful before it crashes. So, let's uh, go ahead and see how long it takes our SSD computer to boot. Power button, I'll just start it now. Or we'll just keep it on, I guess. That's the power light, and then it goes black. I've seen better. We're at 45 seconds right now. It's probably going to take about a minute to be totally loaded up, but let's just call it 55 seconds. It's, you know, pretty not that good. I probably could have started up Windows XP on the other hard drive and it probably would have been faster. But then again, remember when I installed Windows XP on the MacBook with an SSD? Yeah, that was not very impressive. So, thanks for watching, everyone. This has been Drug One, and this has been a very disappointing episode, I guess you could call it. Um, hopefully, in the future, we can get computers that work better. Um, that came up for some reason, I don't know. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you were somehow were able to enjoy any of this. Uh, but we did technically complete our mission. We did get uh, it running on the netbook. Of course, it did not really complete my mission because I wanted to have some sort of reliable netbook that I could browse the web on when I'm out and about, but it's kind of uncomfortable to use because of how small it is and how crappy the trackpad is. So yeah, that's all for today, and I'll see you guys next time.